Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Today's sketch is from scrapbook.com. It's in their sketch gallery, and I think it's from somebody named Mayuchi or Miyuchi. I apologize if I'm saying her name wrong. Um, and anyway, it's a really cool sketch. I really like the um, triangles that are coming off the corners there, and that is pretty much what made me choose the photos that I chose for this. So today I am doing a double page layout instead of a 12 by 12, so, um, and I do apologize, I'm off screen a little bit on the right hand side. Um, I am still getting used to this new setup and I need to adjust some things obviously because I am off camera on the right and um, I've got more on the left than I actually need and there's some glare on the left hand side and <laughs> so um, that's why I put the little sketch there because it's glaring off of this little metal bracket um, and it's hopefully making it so it's not quite so bright in your eyes and um, anyway my apologies for all of the technical problems that I'm facing I'm hoping to get those worked out unfortunately I did view, uh, video about three or four different layouts in the time period where I had my desk set up like this and um, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, I've got my photos laid out and I've decided to use these photos of a tall ships tour that my kids did uh, with their homeschool group. The reason I decided that is because the sketch has those big triangles on it that look like upside down sails to me and I thought it went really well with these photos so that's what I went with. Um, my original thought was that I was going to use some mixed media on this white paper in the background and that is the Vicki Booten mixed media paper but you will see that I decide not to do that um, and uh, I don't really think it needed it there was so many photos and enough other stuff going on on the page that you wouldn't have seen much of the mixed media anyway but I did decide to do some stitching so um, that's kind of fun. <laughs> um, maybe fun if you're not the one doing it, but um, I just did some stitching with my sewing machine, not by hand, um, so not so bad. Um, I stitched the banners on that you see at the bottom here, and I'm going to stitch on the triangles and the circles. I am actually going to stitch those uh, on my sewing machine, but not to the page. Um, and the reason is because some of those are going to be popped up. The, the one that's in the upper right hand corner on the sketch is going to be flush to the page, but the little one is going to be popped up. And so I want it to have that stitching effect, but I don't want it to be stitched to the page because I want to put some foam tape under it. So um, if you want to have that stitching effect, you can just go ahead and run your papers through. And actually it probably would have been just as easy to run those banners through without stitching them to the page because they are layered up so it made it a little more difficult um, I did I did only adhere them kind of down the center and same with the big triangles just down the center because I knew I was going to be running them through my machine and I didn't want to get a bunch of adhesive on my needle um, but I, like I said you could I could have actually just run those through the machine without having the background paper um, and it would have worked out just as well and it would have given you just the same effect. So here's where I've decided that I am not going to use the white paper and I have looked for some different color, colored pattern papers to put behind. Um, I've gone with that blue and white uh, stripe because I really think that has that nautical effect to it and then I think blue and yellow go great together and I had this Prima paper that's at the bottom that has the sailboats on it, so that was perfect. And some of those little flowers have a little bit of yellow in the center. And um, so that yellow, the yellow, um, I'm just going to call those sail pieces <laughs> or triangles, those match pretty well as, um, as well. So... Um, I did go through several different pieces of paper kind of just trying to figure out which one I liked the best. This is the paper that I do end up with, this tealy green color that has polka dots on it. Um, some of the other pieces, the blue was too close to the blue in the banner at the bottom and so the, um, the banners didn't pop off 
and then a couple other pieces were just too busy so I went with this polka dot and I think it looks good for the yellow paper to do those triangles you saw me just use my ruler and that was mainly to get straight lines I was not measuring anything um, I sat there for a few seconds thinking like how am I gonna get these perfect but then I realized you know what they don't need to be perfect if you look at the sketch they're kind of a little off kilter they're not lined up perfect perfectly some of them are sticking out more than others and I really like that effect so that's why I just decided to um, use my ruler to give me some straight lines and um, and it's totally okay that they're not perfectly um, measured out in the same width or anything like that. Now those, the circular pieces, I have a die that is like, it's from Tonic and it is like a doily die and it has I think seven dies included and it has some circles in between each layer so that's how I got that big circular piece um, you could also just take a, you know, a lid of something in your kitchen and draw a circle or if you have the circle cutters from Creative Memories, you could use that. Anything like that would work out to make a circle in the size that you want. So, and actually mine is not a, a, a bleh, <laughs> I can't speak. Um, it's not a perfect circle. It actually has a tiny, tiny scallop on it. Um, I don't know if you can actually see it on your screen or not, but all of my my three circles that I'm going to be using have that same little tiny scallop edge on it, and that's because they're all from that same die pack. And I don't mind that they're not perfect circles. You could use doilies in the place of these circles. You could use, you know, all kinds of different things. Um, and there's my one that's popped up onto foam. And I finally have my pictures kind of where I want them. Uh, I'm just trimming off the edge of the blue and white stripe there and I'm going to put it over onto the right hand page so that it spans the two pages. And I did trim down a couple of these photos. The one of the three girls there that I'm, I'm putting down is trimmed down. Um, there's one of just my son's face because he wasn't in a lot of the photos um, with the group of kids I was with. So my dad actually went with us on this trip um, because he really likes uh, ships and that kind of stuff. So we took him along as a chaperone rather than my mom who was the one that normally would go with us when we went on homeschool field trips. And um, so the boys, the younger, the younger crew was... Uh, with a different guide than the older crew and I was with the girls who are older than the boys so I don't have a lot of photos of the boys um, now I did go through my thickers to kind of figure out which ones I'm going to use I thought I was going to use these blue ones but they did not work out really well with the blue striped background and I actually toyed with putting them under the photos but uh, the blue was slightly off from what the striped paper was and that wouldn't normally always bother me but it was bothering me for some reason so then I decided to try these yellow ones which I like these stickers um, they're from pink fresh studio but the yellow is slightly different than the yellow of those triangular pieces and I thought I was going to use them and then I decided not to so now I pulled out these other foam thickers and these are what I end up going with and this yellow is almost a perfect match to those triangular pieces I really like the ones from Pink Fresh, but um, they're more like a puffy sticker. The yellow is just not a yellow that I see commonly or that I have in my a lot of in my stash, so I haven't been able to use them much um, because of that. It's kind of like a an odd yellow. So um, someday, someday they'll get used. Uh, so now I'm just playing with the spacing, and then I'm going to start embellishing. If you've ever done a tall ships tour, it's really cool to see how these huge masts and all of the rope systems work and everything. The kids really thought it was fun. And I think one of these ships was used um, in Pirates of the Caribbean for something. And so that was, of course, you know, a highlight for them. <laughs> um, 
So we had a great time that day. It was beautiful. We, we did this up in Jack London Square in Oakland, California. So that, um, we had great weather, and it's not that far from our house. So lots of fun. Um, pulling out anything that I think is kind of nautical related or in the right color scheme that would go on this layout. Um, I'm just digging through my color bins. So if you uh, watch my videos, you might know this, but if you don't, I have a lot of my embellishments sorted by color. When I get a collection, I use the collection as much as I think I'm going to use it um, together. And then when I'm down to bits and pieces, I cut it up and I stick it into these color bins. And um, so that's what I'm digging through. I didn't make you sit through it. You saw the screen change a couple of times there because I was weeding through what embellishments I was going to use. Um, so I did pull stuff from like an aqua colored bin, a blue bin, a yellow bin, and um, eventually a red bin. So, and yes, I do have a blue and an aqua because um, there's a lot of aqua colored stuff in scrapbooking. Actually, I have two aqua bins. <laughs> and I knew I had some stuff that was uh, nautical related in one of those bins because I had pieces of this Prima collection that the sailboat paper is from. And so I knew I wanted to find a couple of those. And you see that in the, the little ship, the little um, sailboat that's on my finger now that I'm popping up onto foam tape. And then there's another one on the right-hand side. It's a little red sailboat, and it has a little caption next to it. And then the anchors, I think, are also from that. At least one of those anchors is from that. So I have a little anchor in each section. Now, typically, I have a difficult time using those little flag pieces. Um, and for some reason this time it just worked out and, and I like how they look so I've got a little um, yellow one on the right hand side and a blue one on the left hand uh, upper section and typically when I do a layout that is double page layout I still end up with three embellishment clusters across the two pages um, it doesn't always work out that way so sometimes there's more and um, rarely less but uh, I find that doing three across a double page, especially when your photos meet together in the middle of the two pages, uh, it makes it feel like just one large layout. And I really like the way that it looks when you open up your book. It makes it look like you're supposed to look all the way across the page rather than two separate layouts. So um, if you're looking to do a double page layout and have a a lot of continuity and keep it um, so that your eye moves across both pages it's a great way to do that so um, hopefully that helps you out a little bit okay so you can see um, that I did the stitching I don't know if you can see the stitching online but you can see that I wrinkled up the edges of those yellow pieces I wanted to wanted it to look like there was some movement and um, texture and the reason for that is um, like I said it they reminded me of the sails on the boats of course they're upside down uh, to the orientation of what a sail would actually be but I really liked it and so I wanted it to look like there was some movement or that it was fabric and had um, a lot of texture to it so while I pop some of these embellishments up onto foam tape, let me tell you a little bit about Stretch the Sketch if you don't already know. So we take a 12 by 12 sketch every month, uh, usually the third Sunday of the month, and there's a whole group of us that participate. So go down into my description and check out the links of the other ladies that are participating and see what they've done to stretch the sketch. Some of them are going to be doing smaller, smaller layouts. Some will be doing traveler's notebooks, um, maybe six by eights, uh, eight, eight and a half by 11, nine by 12. Um, some of us do double pages. Uh, you could even go down as far as to a card size. I've done that before. Um, but check it out. It's a lot of fun to see how to use a sketch in a different way than what it was originally intended to be used. So again, check out the links in the, in the box below and um, go see what the other ladies are making. So Let's see here. I have gone to my kitchen and pulled some <laughs> toothpicks. These are like fancy toothpicks, so they're pointy on one end and not on the other. And that is what I'm using for the little sticks for my flags there. 
and now I'm going to pull out some sequins and these are from Cheeky Studio they came with a little bit of ephemera and a wood veneer piece and I'm going to go ahead and scatter those into the three little embellishment clusters and that's pretty much going to do it for my layout if you have any questions or comments you can go ahead and leave those down below and um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below and I'd love it if you subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and if you are thank you so much for subscribing um, stick around for the close-ups they're coming up in just a few moments and I appreciate your time and I will see you next time